blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. in charge of this part of the world to say ahead of schedule congratulations for what God is planning to do after these few years of my relationship with Christ I found that whenever you want to take a new step the devil would like to pull your feet back but if you don't give him attention, he will never give you direction. And I'm glad that this is a ministry that we learn as time goes on. You are constantly going to face battle, but your name will be winning. If you don't know what it means to fight a Christian fight, read the episodes of Paul when uh, I know when you read or when I read they say Daniel was thrown in lion's den oh my god and he came out you know how joyful you are to say he was thrown to lion's den he came out then Shadrach, Meshach and Abed Negro <laughs> were thrown to the fire and none of them burned you think that that fire is air-conditioned room. 
because it wasn't you. It's very easy to read what God did with these great men of faith. And when I, I was a young preacher, I heard a preacher say, prison said, Paul said, in imprisonment often, in shipwreck, in beating, in biting. I said, God, for the ministry, I didn't know that when you answer the call of God, you completely face the devil headlong. The only time you never have problem is when you are told in his path. Then there's no collision. But if you are going to go opposite direction, you are going to learn how to stand your faith and believe in your God. So tonight for the remaining 42 minutes, I want to speak on what I call no prize is too high for your dream. Let me hear you say no prize no is too high to pay, to pay for, my dream. for my dream. Can you say that by yourself boldly? No I didn't hear you say me. Let me hear you say by yourself, personify it. No for me to pay no for my dream. For my dream. And of course, if you have no dream, there's no need of looking for price. But if you are going to have a dream, let me start from the book of Genesis. I'm only going to give four examples of four people in the Bible tonight. One woman and three men. The first one is called Joseph. And the Bible says, and Joseph, this is Genesis 37. Genesis chapter 37. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Verse 9, and he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the level stars made options to me. Verse 11. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. Let me hear you say loudly. He dreamed. He dreamed. Again. Again. Now the first word we read here is that he dreamed a dream and told his brethren. And they hated him. Verse 9 said he dreamed again yet another dream. If it was you and I in the world of today. And I say to you, David, I dreamed I saw myself in a brand new Volkswagen. That's a car Christian like to ride. <laughs> and I saw you coming to ask me for a ride. You say, me? An Englishman asking you for a ride? We will see. Now I leave you, I go back to my house, and I come back. David, that of yesterday is canceled. I have just dreamed another dream. I saw myself in Pajero. You need a ride? Now the dream continued, continued, until the Bible said they left hatred to envy. These are not enemies from outside. These are his brethren. Because the Bible is not talking of the devil here now. Many times you want to think of bad, you only think of devil, you don't think of your neighbor. You don't think of your husband, you don't think of your wife, you don't think of your, anyone close to you. But the Bible says a man's enemy is of his household. And for years, by the grace of God, this ministry has taught me not to go far to see what the devil can do, but very close. That's me, not you, some of you. You have to travel to London to see devil. If you want to see devil, go outside and see what is happening. Now, 
His brethren hated him. His brethren envied him. These two languages, are they Christianly? Please respond back to me. Are they, are they godly language? No. They hated him. Is that a good language? No. They envied him. Is that a good language? No. That's not a good language. But that did not stop Joseph from dreaming. Now he started first, hated him. He progressed, envied him. Now later, they ganged up his brethren and said the next thing is to kill him. When they tied him to kill him, one of them said, why not we sell him? What is his death going to profit us? But if we sell him, we can share the amount. And somebody said, that makes sense. His brethren. Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? His brethren. Say that with me. Decided, Decided. To, kill to kill him. Changed their mind. Changed their mind. And sold him. Sold his brethren. Now, they did that, but listen, listen to the good news from my own research. They first of all took him, tied him, threw him in the pit. Then the Egyptian merchants were passing, if you go to chapter 38, 39, and they saw, don't worry about that, I will tell it to you. They, they threw him in the pit. What threw Joseph to the pit was his dream, not another man's dream. If you don't like what he dreamed, ignore it. But as far as they are concerned, to ignore it was not the reason, was not enough. We were to kill him for dreaming a dream. And for God to worsen it, he made him dream more. That is the part of God. He dreamed the first dream, they hated him. He dreamed the second dream, they envied him. When he dreamed the third dream, they lose their patience. And took him outside the city to kill him. But on the way, somebody said, death is not the solution. Let's sell him and make some profit. They threw him to the pit. When the merchant heard a voice of someone crying in the pit, they stopped from the top of their ass or a horse or a camel. And they said, what's that noise? They said, we have one nasty dreamer. We want to sell him. The Egyptian merchant bought him listen to where the story started changing when they paid for joseph they gave the 30 pieces of silver to his brethren and they turned to go on their way going back to their land the men that bought joseph lifted him from the ground and put him on top of a camel the man they sold was riding home and the one who sold him trekking home I wish that was English language. You think that's an English word? The buyers carried the man high on the top of Rolls Royce. The people who sold him, they were going home sad with a blood-stained coat. They took his coat, they sold him. But the man they sold climbed on the top of a camel, waving them, see you, bye-bye. Esther was captured in the book of Esther, taken to a palace, married to the king. His country were now seized in captivity. And one of the men decided to risk his life to tell Esther what he dreamed. And the dream was that in you is a redemption. Take us out of the land of bondage because the whole nation was going to be killed. And Esther used the words like this. For the dream of my people, if I perish, I perish. But I will stand to defend my people. And the Bible said Esther found favor in the sight of the king. And the man who decided to kill the nation of the Jews was killed. It was a dream that made Esther say, 
If I perish, I perish. Now we come to the life of the person I want to use tonight as a practical example. Hebrew chapter 11. Hebrew chapter 11. Exodus said there was a notice given for any child born in the land of Egypt. If it be a male from the age of one day to two years, they should be beheaded. In the season of beheading, a young boy was born. The Bible says when this young boy was born, the father and the mother saw him to be a proper child. And the word there in Greek, translated to King James English, proper child meant a child of destiny. And so they hid him for three months. And the king couldn't find him. But the story started from Exodus that in labor, in labor, the Egyptian midwife were told, if any Jewish woman was in labor and the head of the child came out and you sighted it and it looks like a boy, use the knife of circumcision to cut the throat. In your hand and in my hand is constantly a knife given by the devil. You can either use a knife to kill or use a knife to do good. The Egyptian midwife said, this child has a destiny. We can't kill him. And in the danger of their lives, they spared Moses and told the mother to speed away. She sped away with Moses and hid him in the same land for three months. After three months, voice of Moses crying in the house was getting louder and neighbors were now noticing that that's a Hebrew voice. Destiny. And the mother bought a basket or weaved a basket. The Bible says she weaved it, but I think she bought it, what, whichever. The Bible is correct. I can just imagine. But now, the mother took the son. Where's your baby, Faith? Can, are you gone out? Okay. Now, now for the mother to take a basket and put the son inside and go to the river bank and say to God, I've done what I know to do. Now it's your turn to do your job. I'm the channel, but you are the source. I hand Moses over to you. Listen to this. All I have been saying, all I've just said in these past few minutes is for what you believe. What price are you willing to pay for your dream and your conviction of conversion? Because if your conversion have no conviction, you are going to be one of those Christians, I believe in God when it's well. I hate God when it's wrong. I love God when I prosper. I don't want to hear of him when I'm in trouble. And when you don't want to hear of God, it's more for you daily than the time you want to hear of God. Today you are dancing and singing. I may not understand the love you have for me. God is good. For you to sing that, somebody's hand receives six inches nails. For you to say, I'm born again, a spear went to his side. He, they pierced his side. My Bible says, blood gushed out. Any of you who sing here is only singing because someone sank for you to sing. Someone dropped from the cross. Someone was torn naked. Someone was bruised. 468 times they lashed his back. He bled 
And when he asked for water in anguish, agony, they gave him vinegar. Today we are singing of the goodness of Christ. But think of what he paid. And why did he pay it? Because God said, who will I send? He didn't say, here we are. Send us. Here am I. Send me. To serve God effectively. To serve God successfully is more than God is good. All the time. That's true. But for you to be able to say that, it costs somebody something. I hope you are hearing me tonight. I'm not going to talk to you like before. And I'm not going to pray for you tonight. You pray for yourself. But listen to this. Think of a man heal the sick. Think of a man raise the dead. Think of a man cast out devil. At the end, the 12 men he walked for ran away. The 12 men he trained ran away. In Mark chapter 16, the Bible said when they were asked, of all this that Jesus has done, do you believe? The Bible said in Mark 16, they believe not. They graduated from three and a half years Bible school with, I believe not. Now who will God trust to commit his work to? In the 15th verse of Mark 16, in their doubt, Jesus appeared and said, Take this gospel to all over the world. In my name you shall cast out devils. You will heal the sick. I cannot send the man who denied me to go and represent me. But I'm not Jesus. I cannot trust the man who said, I believe not. And say, go ye into all the world, verse 15, and preach the gospel to every creature. When you say you don't believe me, I can't send you to represent me. But I'm not Jesus. Jesus believed in them. Your dream will cost you something. Your belief will cost you something. Moses was carried and put in the river. Immediately his back touched the water. Divine power left the river and by divine interpretation went to the king's palace. Suddenly the daughter of the king, the princess, I woke from sleep and said, I've not had my bath since morning. I'm going to go and bath. From her room to the bathroom is about 10 feet. But she said, today I'm not bathing in the bathroom. I'm going to the river. So they have to call all the soldiers in the land to block the way because the princess wants to go and swim at the river. Destiny. When she was getting near the river, she had a cry. I'm here. And whose voice? A Hebrew son. She said to the people following her, the one carrying the towel, the one carrying the soap, the one taking the perfume, the one with the body lotion, shh, can you hear what I hear? And they said, yes, we can hear a sound. And she walked closer and saw a basket flowing towards her. And she looked, a beautiful, lovely baby. She bent down, carried the child, and shouted, I've gotten me a son. Question to you all, was she married? Please answer me. Has she been pregnant? Has she had a son or not? Yes, she said, I have me a son. She took the child and forgot to have her back. And went back home. Danced to the father's presence and said, Daddy, I've gotten me a son. And the father called the whole leaders in the country and asked them to take care of Moses in the palace. So that's the boy he was looking for. Now the boy standing before him treated as the first child of the king. Why? Destiny. But now listen to the story. The Bible says that In verse 23 of Hebrew 11.
Can you all read it very loud for me to hear? By faith, when he was born, was he three months of because they saw he was a proper child and they were all right verse 24 by faith when he was come to years refused to be called the son of pharaoh's daughter verse 25 choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of god and to en than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season verse 26 esteeming the reproach of christ greater riches than the treasures of egypt for he had recompense unto the recompense for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Let me hear you say Moses. Moses. Time must come in your life. In any decision you want to take. For example, my daughter is here tonight. Her name is Ruth. Stand up, Ruth. She went to school. She finished her first degree. She started her master's. She decided to choose a course in life to pursue. Today she's in Buckingham University reading law. Is her choice. If you have no decision, you can never have direction. She's doing law. Take your seat. Feb, stand up. Some of you have seen Feb here. Yes or no? Yes. Come closer to the front here. That is the senior brother of that lady. He's in MDS studying medicine. They are same father, same mother. One year and three months apart. One is reading medicine, one is reading law. Why did they not make their head to do semi medicine, semi law? <coughs> they have their different choice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Law, medicine. Is their decision. We as parents, we couldn't say to them, you must be a pastor. But there's only one thing I told them, finish your education, put your degree on your left hand side and carry your Bible on your right hand side. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? Yes. You can read whatever you want to read. Finish it first. I wouldn't stop you now. Pass all the degree you want to pass. But I will give you a little decree. God in every subject you have studied, he must be the priority of your life. No Christ, no future. No Christ, no decision. You cannot say no to serving God. Yourself, your brother, your sisters, your mother and myself we didn't teach you any other way to go than the way of the Lord. That's our decision. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? Now, if you want to really serve God, first you have to know those who serve God before you pay the price for their belief. It cannot be cheaper now than it was then. We are passing through the way of our forefathers. First from the Garden of Eden, Cain and Abel, same father, same mother, one gave a better offering. The one whose offering was rejected was beheaded by the one who gave a good offering. Today, the Bible record, the blood of Abel cried out from the ground. No price is too high for your dream. No price is too high for your belief. Except if you are not a believer. I jokingly said to Bishop Reed yesterday, supposing somebody came to Panel and said, where is Mr. Clemson? I said, here am I. 
Did I hear that you say your pastor's name is Bishop Reed? Say yes, say nobody like that. Supposing you are told your name is not your name. Are you going to kill yourself? Supposing somebody stand before you and say you are not a man, you are a woman. <laughs> if you have sense, you don't argue. You say thank you very much, but I know whom I am. Did you hear what I'm saying? Because if you begin to drag, I'm a man, you are not a man, I'm a man. Tyson may bite your ears. <laughs> Let me pause to ask you. Supposing you were Joseph who dreamt a dream. And the first people you told were not witches and wizards, but your brethren. And to compensate. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. dreamt a dream. Suddenly, your brother said they are no more your brother. They hate you. Then you still go to bed and God said, Joseph, good morning, good morning. One more dream. You are going to say, please don't. I'm not sure you are aware of what happened to the first one. <laughs> Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Now you, God gave you another dream. But foolish enough or wise enough, one of the two must be the reason. He called them again and said, you are angry for the first one, but look at the second one. <laughs> are you hearing me? Then he told them the third one, he said, I saw all of you bow your head and give me respect. They said, before we do that, you will be sold. Joseph was thrown to prison. They took his coat. Then they bought him and took him to Egypt. When he got to Egypt, the wife of the king, Potiphar's wife, took his second coat. His brethren took his first coat, men. The woman took his second coat, male and female made he them. But the only thing they couldn't take away from Joseph is his dream. You can lose your first coat and lose your second coat for your dream. But don't lose your dream if you lose your coat. 
Because a few years later, 17 years later, Joseph was not only having courts, he was sitting on the throne as the governor general of Egypt. Somebody say hallelujah. What price have you paid for your belief? What price have you paid for your confession of salvation? Supposing now that you are a Christian, suddenly, as you close tonight, God forbid, you are about to enter your car, and another car bash your car, boom, and you lose your leg. Will you still say, thank you, Jesus? Or say, how I wish I didn't go to church. If God have need of you, Think of someone like Saul of Tarsus. He became a Christian on Monday on the way to Damascus. On Wednesday, the people he worked for before now agreed he must kill him. And Saul ran to the Christians. And the Bible said they whipped a basket and put him in the basket and threw him over the fence for his new confession. He escaped to another town to preach the gospel. What price will you pay for your dream? Supposing you are not a Christian preacher, you are just a businessman, and you borrowed 10,000 to establish a business. Three days later, you lost the whole thing. Yet God spoke to you distinctly. Do computer business. Your business house boggled. All the computer packed. Will you say God didn't say so? Or you are going to say the devil said so? What price are you willing to pay for your dream? How far will you go with your dream? That's my question tonight. When it's rough, do you still believe God is with you? When the road is harder than you thought, and the journey is farther than you thought, what price are you willing to pay to get to where you want to go? No price is too high for your dream. Moses, when he came to age, choosing rather to suffer affliction. The Bible is not talking of affection, it's talking of affliction. It was his choice to suffer affliction rather than to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Esteeming the riches of Christ's life than the treasures in Egypt. Which of the two will you choose? The glory of God as a later reward or a temporarily temporal applause of men. I'm here today in England because I paid the price for my nation to be saved. Supposing I got here this evening and Bishop Reed said, My Bishop, you are welcome. But there's no service tonight. Go back home. Thank God I have my return ticket. I wouldn't weep. I wouldn't cry. Yes, it took me time to come. But if I look at what Jesus suffered to bring me here. To where I am. Then the Bible says, count it joy. Somebody say joy. joy. I didn't hear you. Try it again. Joy. The Bible said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Don't accept the salvation of bread and butter only. Accept the call, you pastor. There are going to be times you'll be bruised. There are going to be times you'll be wounded. There are going to be times you'll be injured. There are going to be times you'll be betrayed. By your friends or loved one or relation. Sometimes any girl who wants to marry 
All they hear is, I love you. Get inside first. Any man who wants to marry, all you hear is, I love you, I love you. To say I love you is not difficult. But the first seven years will prove whether you really love me or I love you. Ask any married man, any married man who is sincere, he will tell you that sometimes you wish you were not married. Not in England, but I'm just saying so. But one of the two must say, if we walk, marriage is a game of, I forgive you, you forgive me, we we'll continue tomorrow. <laughs> Not in England, I'm just talking of Africa. <laughs> the simplest argument my wife and I have is, we are living here in 10 minutes. She says, give me five. It's all right. I have told her 10 minutes, 15 minutes time. Honey, are you ready? Two more minutes. I know English women don't do that. 20 minutes later, she's come out with red shoe on a green dress. Then she asked me, did these two go together? I said, very well. She said, it doesn't go. Why are you asking me? If you know green dress didn't go with red dress, why are you asking me? She says, it doesn't go together. I said, who put it in your hand? <laughs> you did. Then she now called our house help. Mabel, bring green shoe there. She rushed and bring three green shoes. She said, none of these. 25 minutes now. <laughs> Finally, the bag is found. The, the shoe is found. We enter the car. Oh, I forgot my key. <laughs> We've done two miles. Honey, leave it. The house is safe. No, no, no. The things I left in the bed, they are going to be missing. We have no teeth in the house, but I want to go back. We drove, we drive back. From honey to madame. From madame to Dr. Margaret. <laughs> Finally, we have to believe God to buy two cars. The law of Becoming a Christian is stronger than the law of marriage. Because when you become a Christian, you are married to the chief shepherd. But what price are you willing to pay for your salvation? The Bible says here, he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Just in case one of these days, your salvation is questioned. What will be your choice? To suffer with the people of God. Just in case, if this church was to be persecuted, if now the government come here, it happens in many Muslim nations, and they send his troops here, if you still want to be a Christian, You'll be killed. But if you say you are no more a Christian, you leave. Half of all of you here tonight. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I'm saying? Half. We run out. Lord, I will serve you anyway. Praise the Lord. <laughs> that happened in Russia. So just enter the church. And say, renounce Christ and live, or accept him and die. And I'm glad to tell you, 99% agree to die. And because they agree to die, they are alive. No price is too high for your dream. Verse 27, read it for me very loud. By faith, he forsook Egypt. Are you, 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 you understand what you are reading? He did what? Look at it. He forsook Egypt. Is that in your Bible? 
verse 38. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of the blood. Lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Verse 29. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. As by dry land, which the Egyptians are sailing to do, were drowned. Verse 31. By faith, the hall of Rahab perished not. Jump to verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions by their beliefs. By their beliefs. They faced lion face to face. By their belief, tiger was plating. By, by his belief, Daniel was told, if you say, no more the God of Israel, we will not show you to lion den. But if you still insist you will serve the God of Israel, you will go to lion den. Daniel said, show me in. I believe I will come out. No price is too high for your dream. No gun is too close to your head to say, I don't know God anymore. They face lions. They face kingdoms. Verse 34. Quenched the violence of fire. Escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, we are made strong. Was valiant in fight. Turned to flight the armies of the alien. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. What price is too high for your dream? Verse 35. Women received their dead raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Women, what price is too high for your dream? I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com the world database of Christian preachers to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. 
videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Verse 36, and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourging, yea, moreover, of bonds and of imprisonment for their dreams. Verse 37, they were stoned, they were sown asunder, we were tempted, we were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented for their dreams. For their dreams. No price is too high for your dream. You may be stoned instead of embraced. You may be chased out when they are read in the book of Luke. Jesus arrived town, the whole government drove him out. Sent Jesus away. They said, well, don't, you are a false prophet. I don't know what, how you look at the Bible. Supposing somebody comes and says, you are not a church, you are a secret court. Will you still believe in God or you are going to try to deny? Carry on with your dream. Carry on with your belief. Carry on with anything. Carry on. Carry on. No price is too high for your dream. If you are chained, you'll be loose later. If you are put in prison, you'll be discharged one day. No price is too high for your dream. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Is your dream challenged? Don't lose focus. Is your head the challenge? Don't lose focus. Is your marriage challenge? Don't lose focus. Whatever it is that the enemy tried to use to make you say no to your God, say yes to Christ. Some were stoned. Some were bruised. You know, every time I read in the Bible, Isaiah 53, and I hear the Bible say, He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. It's sweet to say. It's good to confess. But think that that's a human being. Christ incarnate. Christ in flesh. Wounded. Bruised. Sword. Pierced, whipped, he was wounded for our transgression. The salvation benefit is sweet, but the pain to give it to you was hard. What price are you paying for your dream? Is anybody hearing what I'm saying tonight? To read medicine, Feb goes to school every day, very early in the morning, and come very late. The pleasure of England. He doesn't know it. Are you hearing me? When he, when he was at home at the age of two, driver take him to school and bring him back. At the age of five, driver take him to school and bring him back. At the age he is now, whether snow or sun, no more driver. If you want to go to school, go. But one day, if he needs two drivers, he can get. No price is too high for your dream. Today may be your day of agony.
Tomorrow is going to be your day of rejoicing. No price is too high for your dream. Seven more minutes, I will finish. Look at verse 38. Of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains, in dens, and in caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Stand to your feet, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say stand to your feet and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Obtain a good report. All these Collins as a friend, Medry as a sister. If I had listened to what I suffered to be a preacher, you will not call me preacher today. First time 37 years ago. A white missionary came from England to come and preach in my city. I have no coat of mine. He loaned me one of his coat. My hand was halfway on the sleeve. When he said, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, he asked me to say that, and I said it. My age group carried stone and began to stone the two of us. In the same city, that was 38 years ago, in the same city today, when my car stand and mob by the same townspeople. For nearly 40 years ago, I'm mocked. Today, I'm mobbed. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yes. To accept Jesus in those days was a, a shameful thing. You have better things to do than to be a Christian. Not to accept him today is a shameful thing. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? Yes. What price are you paying for your dream? No price is too high for your dream. It may not be as smooth as you thought. It may not be as easy as you wanted it to be. But no price. Let me hear you say no price. No price. It's too high. For my, dream. for my dream. And any time you want to step forward, there's always a hook by the devil to draw you back. My prayer for you is looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Esteeming the riches of Christ's glory than the treasure of the land of Egypt. Many were stoned. Many were killed. But thank God. The Bible says in verse 29, Of whom the world was not worthy. Of whom the world, no cost was too high. No cost. I wasn't there when God told this man, Drop your police uniform. Carry the Bible. No. Each one of us, we are where God placed us by his divine calling. And destiny is at work in your life and my life. Amen. No price. No price. If it's only one person God sent me here for tonight, I'm saying that to you again and again. No price is too high for your dream. Did you hear me? Pressing forward is the word. The remaining last verse in verse 40. And this all, having obtained a good report, through faith, receive, receive not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made no price. 
finally my champion, Jesus Christ. Born in a manger, denied his kingship. The Pharisees and Sadducees detained him. His age group said, we know where he was born. Is that not the carpenter's son? Do we not know his brethren, Mary and Jada, Labra, James and Bra? 2,000 years later, every trumpet that sounds honors Christ. Every army that march honors Christ. Today, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. He's coming back again as the king of kings and the prince of peace. He paid the price. He bought the shame that we may bear the glory. If you have a dream, let nothing stop your dream. Persecuted, prosecuted, abused, insulted, challenged, denied. Fortunately for you all, you are in England when people face their life rather than facing you. But devil is the same all over the world. And Jesus said, are you not the one that deep hand in the same place with me? You betray me. And Jesus said, betray thy friend with a kiss. Sometimes it's not the people that hate you that will betray you. Lucifer was the archangel of music. And I hope none of you will be that. Judas was the treasurer of Jesus Christ. And I hope none of you will be that. No price is too high. For your dream. At the end of it all, you will find it's worth it. Today, I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to God. I'm praying that your next visit, by the grace of God, you spend time before convention to come so we can go to Abuja and let you see. Of course, you've seen, you've seen great things in Nigeria. The pastors, when I was a young boy, who say, who are you? They are now who say to me, how are you, sir? <laughs> no price is too high for your dream. I got a message from England. Somebody said, I've never seen a bacha. It's correct. Just look at the signboard when you close. No president that ever served Nigeria that I've not had lunch with. Not one. Not one. Not one. Am I going to come to England and say I have, I've had lunch with a bachelor? God forbid. My work speak for me. My cause speak for me. A bachelor didn't call me. God called me. British press didn't call me. God called me. No price is too high for your dream. Go on. Go on. Go on. It will not be long. The trumpet will sound. The dead in Christ shall rise, and we who shall alive shall be caught up to meet him in glory. Come closer tonight. Every one of you, carry your Bible, come forward here. Oh, the old hymns writer says, I'm pressing on the upward ways. New height I'm gaining every day. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 3, Exodus chapter 6, Exodus chapter 9, he brought them out to take them in. Very soon, by the grace of God, if all our prayers are answered, Penel is our beginning point. This place, 49 Costit Green Road, will become our Nazareth. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? This is only the beginning, it's not the end. The best is yet to come. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Be willing to make a move, and when you move, move fast. Don't listen to what the world says. Listen to what the word says. If you want to live long, healthy, hear God more than to hear the devil. 1975. 1975, we were about to open Miracle Center, our first cathedral building. 
and I hear the press say, the, this one said this, I was weeping one night. Oh, God, what have I done? And he said, what did you hear? They blackmailed me. They backbite me. And the Lord said to me clearly, come here. What did you say they did? I said, they backbite me. He said, back bite you? I said, yes. Did they bite your front? I said, no. Back bite me. He said, toughen your skin and deafen your ears and continue the journey. 22 years ago, I heard that. From that time, I've encouraged millions of preachers, millions of believers and thousands of preachers all over the world. The trip is too good to turn back. And the Bible says, he that lays his hand on the plow cannot look back. It's not the devil who called you. And I have it in a small, slight English word. If they blackmail you, whitemail yourself. <laughs> they have black paint, you have white paint. Did you hear what I'm saying? Where you are going is so far. To look back will draw you back. Don't look back. Don't look back. He who is against you is not the one who called you. God is for you. And if you read your Bible very well, you hear the Bible say, I know the thoughts which I have of you. They are thoughts of good things and not of evil. You have a long way to go. This is just primary and kindergarten school you are now. Very soon you enter... High school, class one, the university is still waiting for you. You must be willing to ignore the voice of the devil and listen to God. Once again, I remind you, if you are going to go far, keep your dream. It may cost you your first coat. It may cost you your second coat. But 17 years later, those who took your coat will bow before you. And say, Mr. Joseph! We are here. We need corn. Surprise them and live long enough to prove your enemy wrong. Can somebody say amen? You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was Idaosa's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbinidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God on getting there. I met with the Archbishop my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, 
God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin uh, my class Actually, I went there in 1979. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Ida Hose university all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and i thank god it's particularly good for us whites british because in britain uh people are rather skeptical these days You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis we went to Baltimore flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs. What do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa, who said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. 
So we were on the sea. We have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, if also was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Bini? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. He called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God, could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming uh, anything today, it also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was, I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Cerullo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the Aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives.
Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg what did I talk? Again? Again, again! Hey! Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate, and he said, "Oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it." I said, "How? How are you going to do it?" And he said, "Okay, go out if you don't want to see see me do it." But you know. As a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child, be healed. After he prayed, he asked me, what is the name of the child? Send it to your throne. What's in the girl name? I said it's Inwarata. 
I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father comes, my late Ben Sinidahosa. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. He said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about nine o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> Another no bed to me. After a year and three months in the womb. So, my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand I couldn't wait, and I ran out. With him to the mother. He said, Please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, What is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, 
let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like as that young man that we call pastor believed and he did this and you know when i finished prayers there was an abundant joy unspeakable joy in my spirit and the following day uh we, we used to call him brother benson he came I said, where is the child? He said, the child is there. And I called him to the room. I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside. And I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. He said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer. And that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two girls, and two boys, and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about ten grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. 
A later two correspondence calls from Britain and the United States while working in Bathershoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, Young Benson, Young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven the room was filled with the presence of god as benson fell to his knees before the lord wherever you want me to go i will go he prayed through the night renewing his vows to god and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation after his call benson launched into ministry work preaching from village to village the gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he's also received other degrees from the international university in Brussels, belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world crusade played a major role in his ministry he was involved at least one crusade per month a record crowd of nearly 1 million people a night attended his lagos crusade in april 1985 he established the redemption television ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people what leading gospel minister said about our bishop idaosa according to mrs gordon frada lisa president of christ for the nation incorporated dallas texas usa i know of no young black in all africa who is preaching who is reaching million as benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, 
where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates his demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to award leaders leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher. Uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. Idaosa also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Idaosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to 
talk about his early ministry again as a youth he got converted to christianity by a certain pastor at ball and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members he was very active and converted many to christianity after experiencing a revelation from god calling him into ministry he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of his son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world and I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord I am honored to be a part of his anointing a part of his of his ministry I want to ask you please make sure you share those videos this video this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful powerful humble great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him I, and I'll say it again I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to our bishop Bensi in the house the Lord bless you.